Hello, this is Cliff Rosendale presenting on Red and Pink Lesions Part 1. This patient has three red lesions all encountered on the same day and examined without dermatoscopy. The lesion on the shoulder is a dermal nevus. This lesion on his right forearm is a squamous cell carcinoma in situ. This lesion on his back is an amelanotic melanoma with a Breslau thickness of 0.8 millimetres. So without dermatoscopy, we are flying blind. The first step in diagnosing a lesion of concern is seeing if the lesion can be recognised as belonging to one of the five common benign groups by pattern recognition. These groups are firstly nevus, secondly benign keratinocytic, third hemangioma, fourth dermatofibroma and fifth sebaceous gland hyperplasia. And these lesions make up the vast majority of the lesions, both pigmented and non-pigmented, that we will encounter every day. If the lesion cannot be recognised by pattern recognition as one of these five groups, the next step is to apply pattern analysis. And what we have here is two decision algorithms for skin malignancy. The first for pigmented lesions, chaos and clues and the second for non-pigmented lesions, prediction without pigment. The first step in analysing a pink or red lesion is to see if it contains any structures pigmented by melanin, because such structures are the most specific clues to diagnose it. For pigmented lesions, I use chaos and clues, and it is schematically represented here. First of all, it is a, the lesion is assessed for dermatoscopic chaos, which is defined as any or all of asymmetry of pattern, of colour, or of border abruptness. The shape does not matter, but variations in the abruptness of the border are clues to malignancy. If chaos is present, then we look for one or more of nine defined clues, which are presented here, grey or blue structures, an eccentric structureless area, thick lines reticular or branched, black dots or clods peripheral, lines radial or pseudopods segmental, lines white, lines parallel on the ridges for acral lesions or lines parallel chaotic on bowel plate, polymorphic vessels and polygons. If chaos is present and one or more of these clues, then we consider a biopsy, an excision biopsy, unless we can make an unequivocal diagnosis of seborrheic keratosis by pattern analysis. There are four exceptions, and if a lesion cannot be recognised as one of the five common benign groups, and one of these exceptions is present, we consider an excision biopsy even in a symmetrical, non-chaotic lesion. And these exceptions are any changing lesion on an adult, a nodular or small lesion with any of the clues to malignancy, a lesion on the head or neck with pigmented circles or dermatoscopic grey, and any acral lesion with a parallel ridge pattern. For more information on chaos and clues, I recommend this URL. Prediction without pigment is the method we use when there are no structures pigmented by melanin. And we prioritise ulceration ahead of white clues ahead of vessel analysis. And for more information on prediction without pigment, I recommend this URL. So for a non-pigmented lesion, we first look for ulceration. And if we see ulceration, we recommend an excision biopsy and the most likely diagnosis will be basal cell carcinoma. If ulceration is not present, we then look for white clues and these include white lines in any lesion. What is displayed here are polarizing specific white lines, which can be seen at right angles to each other, but not crossing. And these are a clue to malignancy, as are white lines seen with non-polarizing dermatoscopy. White lines should be whiter than the surrounding skin. And the other white clues are the keratin clues of keratin scale, white circles or white structural areas, and these only apply to 
raised lesions because flat lesions with these clues may be a solar keratosis, actinic keratosis, which may be treatable without surgery. In this case, we're seeing a raised non-pigmented lesion of the surface scale and a white structureless area. In this non-pigmented lesion, we're seeing the clue of white circles. And in this keratoacanthoma, we are seeing the dermatoscopic clue of a white structureless area. If ulceration and white clues are not present, then we use vessel pattern analysis. There are four benign vessel patterns, a clods only pattern in hemangiomas, a centered pattern in separate keratoses, viral warts and dermal levi, a serpiginous pattern in clear cell acanthoma, and a reticular pattern in sun damaged skin. All other patterns should be assessed for malignancy, and in particular, a polymorphous pattern including dots as well as linear vessels is strongly suspicious for melanoma. Thank you.